Hi, I'm Mickey Gousset. Welcome to this video on creating our first YAML pipeline. In this video, we are going to discuss what YAML is and build our first YAML pipeline in Azure Pipelines. YAML rhymes with camel is a human friendly cross language unicode based data serialization language designed around the common native data types of agile programming languages it is broadly useful for programming needs ranging from configuration files to internet messaging to object persistence to data auditing YAML was designed from the start to be useful and friendly to people working with data. It is designed to show data in a natural and meaningful way, such as indention may be used for structure, colons separate key value pairs, and dashes are used to create bullet lists. Let's demo creating our first YAML pipeline. Here we are in our team project, aptly named Azure Pipelines Video Series. A team project is what contains our work items, source code, and build release definitions. Let's look at the repo first. Right now, our repo is pretty bare. It contains a readme file and a gitignore. It also contains a YAML file called My First YAML Pipeline which is the YAML file I created for a different video. I wanted to show you the repo right now so you could see what it looks like before we started. If we select pipelines, you will notice that under pipelines, we have two submenu items, pipelines again and releases. I need to explain that a little bit. Pipelines used to be called builds, and in fact, depending on whether you have certain preview features turned on, it may still appear as builds. With the advent of YAML pipelines, and specifically multi stage pipelines, the menu item was changed to pipelines. Initially, you could only create a YAML build pipeline and not a YAML release pipeline. You had to create release pipelines using the GUI. Now you have the capability to create a YAML file that can handle both build tasks and release tasks. This type of YAML file is called a multi stage pipeline. So, to sum it up, pipelines is where you can create classic, i.e., GUI based build pipelines, and where you can create YAML-based build and release pipelines. Releases is where you can create classic, i.e. GUI-based, release pipelines. We want to create a YAML-based pipeline. To get started, click the New Pipeline button at the top right of the screen. This will walk us through the basic process of creating a new YAML pipeline. First, we need to select where our code resides. As you can see, we have multiple different options. Our code is being kept in Azure repos. I realize we don't have any quote code at this point, but we still need to specify the repo that will hold our YAML file. Select Azure repos git. Now we're prompted to select the repository we want to use. In this case, we only have one repository, so I'm going to select it. Azure Pipelines will scan the repository and make some recommendations of how to initially configure the pipeline. Since we don't have any actual code in the repo, it gives us two options a basic starter pipeline or select an existing YAML file from our repository. If we click Show More, 
then we can see all the other initial configurations we could select. This can be very helpful in getting you started, as it will add all the tasks needed for, say, an ASP.NET Core application to be built and tested. For now, we are going to select Starter Pipeline. This creates a basic starter YAML pipeline for us, which will look familiar if you've watched the first video in this series. First thing I want to do is change the name of the actual file that will be created. I can select the file name and enter something new. Let's call it my YAML pipeline. And I'll hit return. Let's break down at a high level what this file is doing. Trigger is what is used to determine when the pipeline will be triggered. Right now, this pipeline is set for continuous integration and will run every time a file is committed into master. I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to change the trigger value. I've changed the trigger value to none, which will make this a pipeline that I run manually. Pool defines the type of build machine I want to use. I haven't talked too much about how Azure Pipelines works, but just know that you have build agents that you run your builds and releases on. Those build agents can either be hosted in the cloud for you by Azure Pipelines, or you can run your own build agents, i.e. self-hosted. In this case, I'm using hosted build agents with the latest Ubuntu Linux image. And finally, I have two script tasks. Don't worry, future videos are going to dive into a lot more depth of how Azure Pipelines works behind the scenes, as well as the ins and outs of the YAML. For now, at the top right, I can choose save and run this build, or I can choose save it. I'll choose save and run. I can leave a commit message. Remember, I'm actually saving this file into the repository. So my message can be initial creation of YAML build. And you can either commit directly to master or create a new branch for the commit. For simplicity's sake, we will commit directly to master. Finally, I click Save and Run. Now this pipeline should run pretty quickly. We can see the pipeline ran correctly. If we click the job, don't worry, we can give jobs better names than just job, then we can see the run report for the pipeline. If we select the different tasks, such as the run a one-line script, we can see that it output Hello World. And if we look at the multi-line script, we can see that it output the two multi-lines that we gave it. In this video, we discussed what YAML is, and built our first YAML pipeline in Azure Pipelines. Thanks for watching.